Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Honey, and today what I think is going to happen is that we're going to kill a dying hive and give their resources to a weak hive to try to boost them enough that they'll make it through winter and come out in the spring as a strong production hive. So this hive was originally a small swarm, late swarm that I caught, and they went queenless. And instead of just letting them fade into non-existence, I tried to salvage them by pulling a split off of a strong hive that could stand to be reduced and tried to let them rear an emergency queen. And I've checked them a time or two since then and have seen no healthy signs of a queen. So today is make or break day for them. They're either going to be a viable hive or they're going to go away. I've let this hive sort of linger because I had hope that they could resolve their situation. Looks like some drone brood there. That's drone brood. A good amount of nectar there. They're curing that into honey. Some spot of drone brood here. You can see the, the cells. They're extending those out because drones are too big for typical worker cells. So those are not good signs. Um, I'm going to jump down into the bottom box. If I've got a queen, she'll be down there. If they don't, I should be able to tell it. These are sort of sluggish, seeing a lot of dark bees. Those are old bees. We got a cluster here. So if they're going to have a queen, I would expect her to be in there. That appears to be a laying worker hive. Seeing a lot of drones on this frame. I'm seeing drone brood. I'm seeing no worker brood. These guys need to be shaken out. I'll try to get a close up of what this looks like. It's pretty obvious when it gets to this point. I see cells with multiple eggs in them, and all of the cells that are capped have been extended out to the length of drone brood. All right, so this hive is on its way to dying and uh, I am going to pull it off of life support before this comb gets wrecked by small hive beetles and wax moth. I've got another hive down here that was a split, and I'm gonna check it and see if it has any undrawn frames in it. If it does, I'll replace them with drawn frames, and I may give it an, in, an entire box. I just noticed the activity at the hive surrounding this one and looked up in the sky and we've got thunderclouds rolling in. So uh, the bees know that it's about to rain. So I may have to put this on pause for the moment. You know, it's amazing to me how well the bees know the weather. Um, and you can read the bees, it's, it's really cool to me. 
yesterday afternoon I noticed that the bees started piling into the hives look up and there's storm clouds so I packed up all my camera gear and got in the dry and sure enough it started raining it rained most of the night and uh, so I'm, I'm back this morning to sort out this laying worker hive and the situation is that I've got a dying hive that hive is um, it is rearing drones and only drones because there's a worker in there that uh, has never been on a mating flight and she's laying unfertilized eggs. This is basically that hive's last gasp or dying breath attempt to express its genetics into the population. It is trying for everything it is worth to send out drones in the hopes of mating with a, um, a virgin queen. Um, that hive is going to die. So uh, it will continue to dwindle in population. It will get overrun by small hive beetle and wax moth, and I will lose all the comb and the resources in there, turn it into a big mess. So before that happens, I'm going to shake them out and give their resources to hives that could use it, or I will freeze their resources and use them in the spring. Now this hive was a split that I did on a, a hive that swarmed, and I got um, two new hives out of it because I had two uh, queens that successfully mated. I know that they had some foundations in here and it's late enough in the year that I doubt they've drawn them all and they're not going to if they haven't yet. So I'm going to go through this hive and see if they have any undrawn comb in here. If they do, I'm going to replace it with combs from this laying worker hive. That will give them a boost. Um, I'll also assess their condition. If they are big enough, then I may just give them a third box and get them into threes before winter and uh, let them fill up on the rest of the fall flow that's going on right now. So we'll get into them and see where they're at, what they're doing, what they need. I've got that lid propolized down. That's good. Seen a lot of bees. Always try to check the lid for the queen, make sure she's not on there. And she wasn't. And we're drawn there. Uh, not quite drawn here. So I've got at least a couple of undrawn frames in here, frames that are not quite finished. So I know I'm going to replace at least three or four here. The rest of these appear to be drawn out. So I'm going to go down into the bottom box and see if they need any attention down there. Not a ton of weight in that box. Of course I broke some honey loose there. They won't like that. It's like I'm drawn all the way across here. So what I'm going to do with them is to replace their feeder and any undrawn frames with drawn comb and preferably comb with resources, nectar or honey. Brood on that comb even though it's not completely drawn. So I will leave that one in there. We'll give them four. All right, that frame's got some weight to it. That's one I want to take. That one's not completely drawn. That one's got some resources. Got lean worker brood in it. That's really no help. Got some lane worker brood, but also a lot of nectar. 
So we'll take that one. And looks like we've got a honey frame here. So we'll take that. I'm seeing enough population in these guys that I believe they can stand a third box. So I'm gonna add a third to them and just get them completely drawn out. In order to do that, I need to go ahead and shake out this other hive. So that's what I'll do now. I'll go ahead and pull their bottom board as well. I don't want there to be anything there that smells like this hive. I'll just take them a short distance and dump them out. that these lost bees are looking for their home and it's not here anymore so they're looking for a new home and this gives you an indication of the quality of the queens in this row because they're all going to this hive they're not going to the one of the two that are right next to where they were they're actually going to this one so this must be a very good queen in here that uh, smells really good to them it's interesting and what I'm going to do now is take this box of comb that has some honey and some nectar and some resources, but no bees in it, and give it to this hive. I know that they can protect it, and they may fill it. They might fill that up before winter. If they do, that's great. If they don't, I know they can at least protect it. So guys, this is one of my least favorite parts of beekeeping. It's the death of a hive. Um, I did get my resources preserved, and not only that, but I boosted a hive that could use those resources. So I think it's doing a lot of good. I'll take the other box from them and freeze it and just store that until next spring when I will use it to start out a nuke or a, a swarm. And uh, it's just a good use of resources. And the bees that were in that hive will beg their way into another hive and help to boost it. So. It's sort of the, the circle of life here in a, a very small scale. Guys, if you like my videos, you think I've earned a like and a subscription, I'd remind you to do that. I appreciate it. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next one.